All right, so here's my electroplating jig that I'm going to submerge into the electroplating bath. And here is the last half sphere that has been uh, copper powdered, coated inside. And I'm literally just going to allow the spring tension of these electrodes to touch the inside surface and literally hold it in place. be submersed into the electroplating bath, just like that. All right, I have the anode centered in front of the um, in front of the half sphere, and that gives me a nice even plating inside. My camera angle will be pointing down so that you can see the way that the electroplating spreads from the tip of the electrodes. Now, one of the one of the key elements to a successful plating using this method that I found was start slowly. In the previous video I showed you the, uh, the way the tips were cut. I only expose a very tiny amount of copper at the tip of the electrodes that are touching the inside surface of the half sphere. That's because that's the part that immediately starts to conduct when you apply voltage to the two terminals on the uh, on the electroplating jig. Also notice that I have voltage dividing resistors here that give me a very even current being fed to each of the three tips. Each one of these is 150 ohms. I don't put more than 120 milliamps through the three of them or 40 milliamps per resistor because these are only one quarter watt resistors and I'm running them at about uh, I want to say 0.15 watts when I'm running 30 milliamps or 40 milliamps through each one so 120 milliamps of total current is my maximum and even that is too much I normally plate at about 60 to 100 milliamps total so when you first start and you first apply the voltage uh, the only part that is is really conducting in the plating solution is the very tip of the copper electrode until the copper plating starts to spread out between the particles that have been deposited on the inside of the uh, on the inside of the half sphere and if you look at the way it spreads out it's kind of like the way um, it's kind of like the way melanoma spreads out on the surface of someone's skin quite frankly uh, it, it spreads out very rapidly from the, from the point of contact to the rest of the rest of the ball and eventually forms one solid layer, uh, one complete one contiguous layer all the way across the inside wherever the copper powder has been has been laid in place. And um, then, it, then from, from then on, as you plate, it only becomes thicker and thicker rather than spreading out. But the spreading process takes place very quickly. That's the purpose of the powder. But you need to start slowly because if you apply too much current what happens is the amount of current per square millimeter let's say of the electrode uh, is very very high. So if I have if I applied 120 milliamps through this and I had 40 milliamps at each tip that would mean that I've got 40 milliamps across the surface area of about one millimeter which is the amount of exposed copper of just the tip of the wire and that high of a concentration of current in such a small space causes the copper to actually grow like a crystal garden and start to spread out from the from the from the terminal and rather than spreading out onto the powdered surface that I want it to so when I start I only start at about six to seven milliamps total or only about two milliamps per electrode and the the amount of time that it takes for the copper plating to start spreading on the interior surface of the half sphere as I stated earlier is very rapid so you can let it run for maybe an hour or even as short as a half an hour at only two milliamps per electrode and then you can slowly ramp up the amount of current by increasing the voltage going to the um, going to your input terminals here 
So I'm going to start out at about maybe a volt, even less than a volt, and that will give me the um, 6 to 8 milliamps total that I want flowing into this circuit. And then once, once I start to see the formation of the copper, I can increase the current because now I know that the amount of surface area, the amount of plated copper that is exposed is greater. And as that occurs, then I can increase the current and the amount of milliamps per square millimeter is much lower. And as long as I don't go too high, then I'll get a nice smooth layered coating inside the half sphere. And that's what I ended up with, like in this example right here. That is a beautiful copper plated coating. I love this. So let's, let's do it. So there it is. There's the, uh, the half sphere submerged and I'll start the current flowing very, very low to begin with and then slowly ramp it up and you'll see from that electrode at the bottom, which is actually the red insulated wire that is touching that, that you'll see how the, uh, the, the copper plating will start to spread and grow from that point of contact and literally just completely cover the in, in entire inside surface of the plasma sphere. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. So I've got my digital multimeter ready. Got my electrodes ready. And I'm gonna turn on my power supply. Bring the voltage all the way down. I'm using this to measure current. I'm on the 200 milliamp scale. And attach my lead like so. And I start out with 4.4 .4 milliamps initially. And this number will start to increase to 6, 7 milliamps all by itself because the amount of surface area that is uh, exposing or the amount of copper exposed to the electrodes grows immediately as, as soon as it starts to plate.